it's very exciting for me to be here because today we will be actually launching the Dutch edition of my book, uh, Jugal Innovation, as well. And of course, you might be thinking, like, what the heck is this thing called Jugal? Like, he keeps saying Jugal. What is a Jugal? Jugal? And what is that? Well, I'm going to introduce what this concept is about. Yeah. Jugad is actually a new mindset that allows companies and entrepreneurs to innovate faster, better, and cheaper. And Jugad, in a nutshell, is the ability to look at a challenge or adversity and see an opportunity in it for innovating. So it's the ability to look at the glass as being always half full as opposed to as half empty. Uh, Jugad is also about being frugal and do more with less. That is, creating more value for yourself and for your customers by using fewer resources. Uh, so in a nutshell, Jugad is the ability to improvise a frugal solution using ingenuity and lots of resourcefulness. Yeah. So the reason Jugad is sometimes difficult to adopt in Western companies is because a lot of the Western companies have invested so much in structured processes. So the organizations have big hierarchies, um, they have a lot of bureaucracy, and they have processes like Six Sigma, for example. And all these things create a lot of inertia in the company. Um, and it actually stifles or limits the expression of creativity of the employees. And we all know that with technologies like social media and mobile technologies, employees, particularly the generation Y, the millennials, want to express more freely their creativity in the workplace. But these structured layers of bureaucracy are preventing them from doing so. So Jugaz, in a way, is about unleashing the ingenuity and the creative expression of all your employees. So collectively, as an organization, you can actually innovate faster, better, and cheaper. So I think it's important, it's important to kind of uh, rein in um, the, you know, the, the control freak instinct a lot of companies have. And that's the kind of price you have to pay as a manager to kind of say, I'm going to give up a bit my control. Uh, and then in exchange, I'm going to get more innovation because all employees will be more engaged and therefore more creative and we can all take things forward. Let me give you an example. Um, I don't know if you know a company called Hire, which is a Chinese uh, appliance company. Uh, they you know, are becoming a very big competitor to Whirlpool, Electrolux, etc. And uh, in one instance, this is what happened. One of the service technicians in China received a phone call from a farmer who complained that the washing machine gets clogged. And when the technician went to see what the heck was going on, and he discovered that the farmer was using a washing machine to wash potatoes. Okay? And of course, if you are a Western <laughs> company, you might look at it and frown and say, wait a second, this is not to wash potatoes, for God's sake. And then what you do is you create a service exception, they call it, and you rewrite the manual with the big letters. This is to wash clothes, not potatoes, stupid, right? So, but these guys ended up thinking very cleverly because they said, you know what? This farmer is not the only one who is trying to wash the potatoes. Is there a way we can adapt this product to meet the requirement? And they did. They came up with a new washing machine with bigger water pipes they can wash both potatoes and uh, clothes. And it became a big hit. And guess what? They even come up with another version that can peel potatoes as well. I'm serious. And that also became a bestseller. So very interesting company. And the reason is because their CEO, Jean Rumin, is a very Juga thinker. So what he said is that in a 60,000 60, employee company, <coughs> He eliminated all the middle management. Sorry if you're a middle manager, but so they, he took away all the middle management. He said, you will take the pyramid structure, make it flat. So they all operate as cross-functional teams of R&D, manufacturing, marketing, and that allows them to quickly sense and respond to market opportunities. That's why they were able to sense an opportunity and jump into it very, very quickly. I mean, some of the things that companies can do, managers can do, and uh, leaders can do is, for example, don't ask your R&D department to come up with the perfect solution. Because if you do that, then they're going to go and create, you know, uh, over-engineered, very complex solution. It will take them months to do such, you know, uh, product, and then it will cost you a lot of money. Rather, I think the new approach, the Jugad approach, is actually to look at what the market needs are and quickly create a solution test in the marketplace, get input, and then iterate on that. I think this kind of very frugal, you know, iterative way of developing new solutions is the way to go. So I would kind of not try to ask my R&D people to come up with the ideal, perfect solution, but come up with a good enough solution. Um, similarly, I would also encourage my marketing team to work more closely 
with customers. And rather than pushing your products, begin to understand what the real needs are. Actually go in the field to really see and empathize with the customer pain point. And then that insight will give you the idea how to come up with a good enough solution that really hits the bullseye, which is perfectly meets the need of the customers. And if you look in a country, in a continent like Africa, 80% of African families are unbanked. But nearly <coughs> 600, 550 million people in Africa also have a cell phone. So of course, if you're a media you know, the economist, you can keep saying, oh, why they don't have a banking account? It's very bad, you know, blame the government and whatnot. But if you're an entrepreneur, you look at it and say, on the one hand, you have scarcity, but on the other hand, you have abundance. How can I use abundance, which is interconnectivity, to solve the other problem, which is scarcity? And that's what they did in Kenya, where they actually came up with a solution you might have heard, it's called M-Pesa, which is a mobile payment solution that allows people to transfer money without having a bank account. And this solution today has 15 million subscribers in Kenya. <coughs> that is more than the number of people who have a banking account in Kenya, which is really mind-boggling. And this solution, of course, is now being replicated worldwide, not only in emerging markets like Afghanistan and Philippines, but more interestingly, it's coming to the US. And here's an interesting data point for you. 60 million Americans today are either unbanked or underbanked. I think in 10 years, I see the world where people actually use the Jugad mindset to create meaningful solutions. That means solutions that add a lot of value for the fellow citizens, uh, whether it's in their local communities or the rest of the world. So I actually think that we are going to head to a world where people are going to become more frugal in terms of how they use limited resources to generate more value both for themselves and their local communities. So I see actually a world which is going to be built on collaboration uh, with a lot more openness uh, to ideas and best practices from anywhere in the world. And I also think that we are going to enter a world where because of the scarcity we are facing more and more, a lot of innovation is going to come in terms of you know, using limited resources to generate more value. Uh, so this equation of doing more with less is going to become, I think, the kind of new strategy for a lot of companies and also will become the new uh, economic development model for many governments and societies in the West. The other industry, as you know, I think is going to happen in Europe as well, which is really in desperate need for innovation is healthcare industry. And what's happening now is that with new technologies like mobile telephony and social media, you see a new generation of entrepreneurs who are using digital technology to actually make healthcare services more accessible and affordable to more people. So Rock Health is an accelerator. It's a company that helps incubators grow fast. And uh, one of the startups that uh, they have incubated is called uh, Cellscope. Cellscope has created optical attachments that you can attach to your iPhone, and you can convert any iPhone into an otoscope. So if you're a mother, you can just check into the ear of your daughter and see if there's an infection. No need to go to see a doctor. And they even have created another attachment for a dermoscope. You can actually like, you know, check the skin condition as well. So again, this is a kind of very interesting frugal solutions that anyone can afford. And they gave me the price point, I can publicly say, but let's say that it's gonna be one tenth of the lowest end equipment available right now by doctors to make the same test. So 10% of the cost. Right. I think you can also use Jugad in a way to improve your existing business processes or any process you might have, like a manufacturing process or any other process in a company. Because Jugad can also give you a way to look at the existing process and say, how can we make the process better in terms of you know, making it more cost effective, making it faster or more responsive to your business needs. In summary, uh, very simple takeaways, three of them. First is that um, Jugad is really about being frugal, flexible, and inclusive. Those are the three dimensions of Jugad. And I kind of enunciated six principles. And uh, what I recommend is that as you read the book, just try to identify which principle, one or two, that resonate best with you. And then try to implement just those principles. It may be keeping it simple, it might be following your heart, it might be seeking opportunity adversity. Pick one and try to diligently implement that organization. That will be a nice way to kind of you know, get an upstart, uh, quick start on, on Jugad.